A few years back, we were approached by Terry Madden of Play Builders Hawaii. Um, and she told us that she was interested in doing a stage play about foster care in Hawaii. Um, we, our traditional ways, you know, of talking about foster care has always been through presentations um, to groups of folks, to having events or booths in the community. Um, and to be presented an opportunity to talk about this issue uh, through the arts was something that was so exciting to us. Uh, it was inspiring. Uh, we, we thought like, absolutely, you know, we're on board and um, just happy and honored to be a part of it. Um, and Terry went out and sought out um, people in the community that were stakeholders um, in this issue. She talked with former foster youth. She talked with resource caregivers. She talked about, she talked with social workers and staff from the department. She talked with therapists. Uh, that were involved, she wanted to give a voice to, and she was so open um, to the community, the foster care community in general, um, and wanting to, to really, really um, put a face to this issue in the most responsible way that she could. Um, for the, the former foster youth especially that were involved in this project, I think that this was an opportunity to heal. Um, you know, not just an opportunity to share their story, but to really feel as though they could make a difference. They, they could share their story with um, this huge population of people that may not necessarily have heard it ever before. Um, and it brought a voice to them. Um, as far as the resource families, um, that was also an opportunity, I think, for them to heal. You know, they go through a lot in terms of being able to be there for these children, you know. And while on a daily basis, they know exactly why this is important and why their work is so valuable. Um, but to be able to share their stories um, about what they do and how they help kids and why they continue to do this year after year after year, um, was was just invaluable. And through this process, getting people involved was really important as well, especially voices from the Department of Human Services. And I recall one evening, we were really fortunate to get two social workers from the Department of Human Services to come to one of the um, gatherings at uh, Mark's Garage. And they shared their story from the viewpoint of what they do and why they do it and how they do it. And, um, and at the end, it brought people to tears. And I think because they didn't have an opportunity to hear that side of the story. And we actually have in the cast former foster youth. So having a social worker who dealt with uh, foster care issues and dealt with um, other kids, uh, it was very, um, profound to have them there to hear why they do it and to even ask them questions on why they did certain things um, and it was actually healing it brought healing not just for um, the, the social workers who actually cried because they actually sang one of the closing songs at the end um, in honor of these two ladies but also for for former foster youth who were involved who were able to uh, share their stories through song and poems um, but also Former foster youth who I actually worked with, who attended the play, came up to me and just was so floored. And they shared that they actually had, uh, finally, someone was able to speak what they felt. My mom and dad came here when I was about two. And from what I could understand, they just couldn't deal with my disability. It's simple as that. Before I came here, I lived in one Wahoo. Uh, my last foster family, they looked good on the outside, but they weren't good on the inside. I lived with them for 10 years, and my stay there was unbearable. Before Uncle Arthur and Auntie Aline, I had been placed in over 30 foster homes. Now, I can understand that it can be physically and emotionally stressful for a foster family to take care of someone with a disability. This is stuff I don't like to think about. You know, I laid in bed all day long and no one would visit me. 
I could hear people talking in the other rooms. Uh, they thought I couldn't understand, understand what they were saying because they spoke to Galak. But I understood more than they knew. I understood everything that was said about me. And it was, you know, by the time I left there, I only weighed 69 pounds. The CPS came by one day to inspect, you know, to see how I was doing. They thought my low weight was because of my condition. But this one time, I spoke up for myself. I asked them to take me away from them. <laughs> Sometimes you have to fight for yourself. The play really shows the relationships and interaction between child and child in the home and most importantly, child and resource caregiver. I thought that was really important having that uh, portrayed because we are really the pivotal for these children. We work around them and we help them. We're their, um, we're their advocate. Resource caregivers are the advocate and it showed that in the play. Um, it also showed the struggle for foster children having to deal with their own personal problems, um, their feelings, their emotions, everything. My kids keep me young, uh, they keep me happy, they keep me in style, in tune, in, with everything. Children are a wonderful asset. Use them, bring them into your life. If you have any thought of becoming a foster parent, this is the way to do it. They need you and you're gonna find that you really need them. How much longer can we keep your this up, really? We've been through all this before and I'm not just talking about her. All this stress, and I can't stand seeing you so hurt. We're getting too old already. It's just time for us to retire. People say that. Maybe we could stop taking the teens in. Maybe we could take just the little ones instead. The little ones have their own issues. Yeah, but at least it's not drugs. At least we don't have to put up with that. She even remembered the first time she came here. She was so small. It's a cute scared little kid. But now, sometimes when I look in her eyes, it's like I don't even know who she is. I mean, her eyes are hard. They're so hard. Well, you know, these people take these kids in who have been through so much, and the first time they do something wrong, they let them go. We're not like that, honey. You're not like that. You know that. 16 year old girl. Not so close to the eyes like that. But still, you. I mean. Yeah, we stick to them like a pee. <laughs> This is our story, and so Michelle and Apu and I, we started um, meeting every week, mm -hmm. and we would just play like over and over, like just, oh, yeah. just like just come up with ideas. Uh, we had this notepad, and we would just like pass it around, and like yeah, like here, write write something. What what are you feeling, right? Yeah. And and so we we started writing like for change. It was like each of our own experience of what change meant, and so. Um, from there, like the, the song became personal. But then we kept asking each other, you know, what more does the song need? And then, how do you feel about the change? Right? Yeah. We, had, we kinda had to, we went deeper into it just to understand it. But I think it, when we went to your basement, mm -hmm. that invited a whole different uh, perspective because the light turned off, it was dark for like quite a while. And then it turned back on, and I was like, 
you know, yeah. I played that chord, I was like, oh, there's a light. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the chorus goes yeah. now. We should, should we sing There's a Light? <laughs> blessing in disguise to have this opportunity to be able to share not just our story um, but something that can actually relate to people mm -hmm. music people right. love music and yeah. it's been you know in our lives since the beginning and it's like one of those things when you finally hear a song and you're like oh, I can relate to that so mm -hmm. you replay it and replay it and like if you're ever caught in that like horrible place that dark space and you just think of the song. It, it might not heal instantly, but at least you know somewhere out there someone wrote that song because they were in that too. Yes. And the fact that they were able to write a song and have it just go somewhere, yeah. small or big. Yeah. It it gives so much hope. It does give a lot of hope. Yeah. Every year I have asked the same question. The process of Dragonfly, um, I came on board uh, a little later as a director. Um, prior to me coming on board, um, they were having story circles and I guess this whole process took uh, probably almost a year. And uh, so they compiled all the different stories from various people in the foster community, um, foster children, um, foster parents. Um, social services, um, law enforcement, and so forth. And so we got everybody's perspective. And the script was formulated with that in mind. And that went through changes as well as we were going through it. Um, I met the core group of play builders, and we would have um, uh, not rehearsals per se, but workshops. And um, then the script was ready to have an audition. Uh, I was ready to go into production, so we had an audition, and the turnout was great. Um, and so we cast the show. And um, this is not like your typical theater uh, experience where um, you have actors come into audition, but we had people who weren't um, performers, 
Um, we had people who really were from the foster community. One of the goals is to, of course, tell the story as best you can, but also on a personal level with the performers, uh, whoever participated, I wanted to make sure that they understood that they could do more than what they thought they could. And of course I didn't tell them that. So I really pushed them and I, I wasn't gonna lower the bar. You know, being in New York City for over 25 years working professionally, I was not going to lower the bar. Um, but we, people just rose to the challenge. I mean, we had a, um, it was long, it was difficult. But I think at the end of each rehearsal, there was a sense of accomplishment and how much more they could go, how much further you, know, you can push them. And, what, and so the end result was something that I think nobody will ever forget. I think it's, uh, it probably was a def one of the defining moments in each and everyone's lives. And uh, to see performance, uh, after every show, people standing up, cheering them, and it was amazing, you know, um, people were crying in the audience, you know, there's that whole sense of, when you talk about fostering, you know, it has this dark shade that comes over you, but I think the piece was one of hope, and I think we did our job, because there are some uh, adults who were interested in being foster parents, and so just that, I think we we did what we were supposed to do to help the foster community. The best part about working with Play Builders is the community engagement and the feedback from the audience. We did a lot of shows that were for specific communities and groups, like the foster youth community, uh, the leeward community. Uh, we went to Wahiwa, and everywhere we went, there was someone who would come up after and thank us for sharing these stories be, and whether it was because they knew someone who needed to have that story told or they personally felt they needed it to be told. Um, there was people who would come up and tell me stories about their own experiences that I really wish we had known before and could make it into the play. But um, that was really amazing. Usually as a performer, when you meet the audience after, it's very like, oh, I liked it and it was good and I liked this part and I liked that part. But only in a Play Builders play do people come up and say like, I, that was my life and I lived that. And thank you for showing everyone and doing it well and in a way that I support.
it's um, been 10 months since our last performance of Dragonfly, which was done at New Hope Church, Leeward Waipahu. And uh, since then, we have um, been moving forward with, with Dragonfly. Um, it has been on Olelo. Olelo uh, broadcast it, and uh, it can also be seen uh, on their uh, Olelo On Demand. Uh, we have been working with Nanakuli High School in order to, uh, for them to be able to produce the play in, uh, in November of this year, of 2018. Uh, we have raised more money in order to uh, put together music tracks and have also gotten tremendous uh, volunteerism through uh, Honolulu Community College and Leeward Community College uh, so that uh, Nanakuli can have um, live music at their performance. And we are donating uh, 52 scripts to the Hawaii State Library, so every library in Hawaii will have a copy. And if any school or helping organization should wish to, to take a look at the script, they can do so easily. And I think back on what we accomplished, um, it's amazing. It was all done uh, with the spirit of Laulima, of many hands. And I will never forget all those who participated. They were amazing um, in their generosity of time and talent. Perhaps the most powerful testimony I got was when a police officer came up to me and said, I work out in y and I, and I have to deal with kids in trouble all the time who are in the system or have been in the system, and I will never approach them the same way again because now I have a better idea of what they've been through. So I want to thank everyone who helped, who gave of themselves 150% because this play would not have happened without all of you, without your talent and your, your willingness to be vulnerable. And, um, you know, 10 months later, um, uh, the play is over. People have gone back to their jobs. Sometimes their jobs have changed. A lot of the kids that were involved with Dragonfly are, are now actually performing in other theater companies like Diamond Head and um, uh, Manoa Valley and Kumukohua. And, and so they have found a passion doing theater. Um, but the play definitely lives on, and I hope um, that, uh, that it continues to bless those who participate in it and those who are able to see it. It's been the most incredible experience of my life, um, and, um, and what is there to say after that? Except, um, except we need to make commitment to help these kids. And I hope this play will plant seeds, continue to plant seeds for people to step up and uh, be willing to, uh, to share their homes with kids in need.
sometimes I do things that can make you cry So many feelings I can't explain All I know is that they're different shades of pain And I want to know what it is to love I want to try And I know 